dreams. God, she's got that envelope precariously held in their hand. A few programs ago, I guess, uh, I don't know how many, how long ago it was, I gave you an envelope. And you had mentioned in the audience that you dream fair, fairly vividly. That's right. You, do re you dream in color. No. <laughs> you don't? No. I don't know whether I, I could never find out. Well, I, we must be honest about this, and that is uh, we wanted to invite Barbara back when there was some significance in her dream pattern. So my staff has been in touch with her, and she's been describing various dreams. And then before the program, I also spoke to her so that we could reconstruct it. But no one told you what to dream. Definitely not. We, we did not tell you to, to dream of a certain thing or suggest it. You just kept notes on what you did dream. Yes, now, I gave you this envelope, and let's hold up so the camera can see. I don't want to handle it. No, you've never opened it, have no, you? No, I have You don't I held know, it up to the light. <laughs> but you, you never, you held it up to the light. You read through <laughs> I things. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> and you, you do not know the contents of it. You've no. given it to no one. No one else has handled it in no, any way, shape, or form. Now, let me ask you before you check the envelope because when Dr. Krippner explained a test like this and this is not a clinical test we did it more or less as an interesting experiment he would have people relate every specific incident in their dreams a lot of details and find out if they incorporated in their dream what someone was concentrating upon a subject that was a sender tell me a little bit about uh, your dream content the past uh, few weeks uh I know you, you made some notes to, on it. Yes, yeah. I did. You yeah. want to take it out? Go ahead. That's all right. I just don't want to... Just very, very quickly, what are some of the things you dreamt about? Uh, a football game. A um, football game. One person three times. Would that have anything to do with the game? Without yes, mentioning any names? Did. Yes, it did. In other words, three times in a row. Uh, could you just give a first name? Uh, Dick. Dick. And what else did you dream about? Uh, one night, I couldn't remember the dream, but I woke up thinking number three. I didn't number know three. what three referred to, but number three. And anything else? Uh, <laughs> I gather the most recurring thing than what was the was the football game yes, situation. Yes. How many nights did you have that in a row? Three. Would you all right? Would you tear open the envelope, please? Hold it up to the light so you're not tearing through anything, and just tear it up on camera. There's a couple of messages. In fact, I'm going to ask you to pull them out once you break them open, and be very careful. Good. You got two oh, things. Hold on to the small one in one hand. The small slip in one hand. Open the large one first of all, please. Read out loud what it says, Barbara. First of all. To my dream subject, the subject matter of a dream I've enclosed will be successful only if you experience the dream at least three times. Now, no one told you we were looking for three times in the dream. No. At least three times. You dreamt about a gentleman, his name was Dick, and it had to do a football game. Would you open that also, please? You've kept this in your possession throughout this period. Yes, I have. Read it slowly out loud. Whoever my subject will be, I shall attempt to enter into his or her dreams. A theme in which a ball and the name Dick or Richard will repeat itself. Isn't that wild? expressing dreams we'll stress again no one told you what to think about or how many times Definitely. Barbara you've been a fantastic subject really Thank you so much. I want to uh, mention now because our program is moving <laughs> so rapidly that in order to really do justice to a remarkable woman I'm going to introduce her briefly and with loving care and yet she is one of the strangest persons I have ever met in my life her name is Dame Sybil Leek <laughs> They are so enthusiastic. You look fantastic. Sit down, Dave. You said that? May I call you civil? Yeah, but how come you could introduce me as strange? <laughs> I mean, in, a, in a loving way, I, I love your writings. Well, hold my hand. All right, if we get any vibration, I think he's going to re read Ooh. me shortly. <laughs> you know, I, I know many, many times there's been. Maybe the unnecessary kind of humor related to one area because you're known as a medium, mm -hmm. you're known as a psychic, an astrologer. Mm -hmm. And also, Sybil, and I, and I have to express what's on the mind of our viewers also as a witch. And yet, for you, it isn't a joke, and it's not an act, and it's not an evil thing, is it? No, it certainly isn't. And you're very clever. Thank you, thank you, Sybil. But at the same time... You're a uh, foxy old thing. <laughs> am I getting... Well, let me ask you, what, no. what is witchcraft? For me, it's a religion, and nothing Dating to do with... Dating back to the Druid period? Yes, I'm a Druid. And uh, it goes well back to the time when 
men were just thinking there must be something greater than themselves. Even then, in this concept, yes, there was a feeling of a greater power. There has to be something greater than us. And I'm not anti-religious. I think I'm anti-hypocrisy. I agree with you. I think if you're a Roman Catholic, be a very good Roman Catholic. If you're a Protestant, be a very good Ro- uh, Protestant. And I think if you're a witch, be a good witch. And I think if you're the Church of Satan, change. Ah, <laughs> then, then Sybil, witchcraft, do I gather, and because it's been distorted, is not dealing with Satanism? Because no. we're told this, we're no. implied this by certain so-called leaders. This has been leaders. bad publicity in the Middle Ages. And, um, of course, a terrible concept that has come through because witchcraft was taken underground. Yes. And when anything becomes secret and goes underground, a mystique is built up about it. And legend is added to it and added to it. And the things that we don't understand or don't even take the trouble to understand are the things we're afraid of. That's very true. We usually give, add a certain mysticism yeah. and an occult which is hidden to mm-hmm. them. When we come back, uh, I'd like Sybil to really tell us She's a legend in her own life, and she has met legendary figures. She's written a book called My Life in Astrology. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Sybil, I found your book, and I've read uh, three of... How many books you've written? Um, 39 I've had published. I've written more, but 39 have made 39 it. 39 books. It's an interesting uh, uh, title, My Life in Astrology. And I, I'm kind of questioning regarding astrology. I've got to mention to you... I read somewhere uh, there's such interest in the underworld characters and, and things like the mafia. And you noticed something about signs and oh, mafia. Yes. What is this? Well, you know, the, the, quite a lot of the mafia leaders have been born with the sun in Leo. And those who haven't quite made it have been sun in Pisces, born in March. I do, I do a tremendous amount of astrological research. I take blocks of 500 horoscopes of different types, mm-hmm. uh, like people who have arthritis, people who are known to be leaders in the mafia. Come to think of it, the FBI might be interested in me, might they? Oh, forget it. They're no, just no, no, no. pieces of be. paper. No, no, no. And uh, it's very interesting to follow. I'm, I'm purely dedicated to research in astrology. Well, you're I so, love it. You're a prolific writer. Now, you are also a medium. Mm-hmm. And I, can, I have seen film of Sybil Leake taken into a setting where there were supposedly, or many believed to be, other poltergeists or restless ghosts. How did you start in this? Was this part of your whole background? Well, I always accepted that um, reincarnation as a fact. You do believe in that reincarnation? That the spirit is indestructible. And, of course, I teamed up with various parapsychologists and... I was their guinea pig for years. I didn't earn any money from it. I was purely a research guinea pig. Just like Eileen Garrett was for many years. Yeah, really, I was a guinea pig. And it was very interesting, but I wasn't interested in ghost hunting, as the people, Mm -hmm. papers uh, described it, but I was interested in proving facts that the spirit was indestructible. And my ghost hunting exploits with and adventures with various parapsychologists really convinced me that the spirit is indestructible. And did you feel that you were picking up, uh, at times, distressed spirits? Yes, and I think to release them was very, very good because a spirit that is tormented will manifest itself in many ways, not with the clanking chains and Mm -hmm. so on, but particularly a mischievous one, a poltergeist. uh, I've seen houses practically destroyed. Uh, There was a house in uh, the south of England uh, where the Bishop of Exeter went to exorcise the ghost tell you the truth, he wasn't so good. Really and truly. I, he tried. Yes. But you know, the church is a little funny on exorcism. They have it there, but they don't like to use it because then if they're taking something away, they have to admit it's there. Right. Well, did he, was he See? able to exorcise the ghost? No, because after that I went. And what did you do? Well, we had a very interesting time because this ghost had done tremendous damage in the house. And the house has been free for about six years now. And I think to release these troubled spirits is, is, is part of my life. Tell me now, your mother was involved in some area of, of psychic phenomena? Oh, my she? family. Your my f- two sons are far better mediums than I am. Who were some of the people that you saw as a child in England or at your home that came to see your mother? Oh, we had the most, I had the most fantastic uh, childhood because we, I was 
born in England but spent a lot of the time in the south of France. And my father was a very scholarly gentleman, and people like H.G. Wells would visit us. H.G. Wells. Mm hmm. Mm. And Lawrence of Arabia and the Sitwells. And I really didn't know anyone when I was a child unless they were famous. And it became a natural part of your everyday a, life. It became a part of my everyday life. Well, I don't know. I must say something. And, I, and there are times in a program, and maybe it's not too often, when you regret the time gone by. I know we've gone way over time. The only answer is to have Sybil back in the near future. Oh, Sybil, stay Christian, here. I want to teach you some card tricks. Oh, my God. We'll be back in just a moment with an interesting experience. You know, folks, first of all, Sybil's uh, information, her knowledge is, is extensive. And no matter how controversial it may be, it is something that we, I think we'd find interesting from a cultural and educational viewpoint. But I have here a very, very old book that Bill Luxton read from earlier on the physical phenomenon of spiritualism. It was written over the turn of this past century by Herod Carrington. Now, I don't particularly believe in spiritism. I respect the religion, though. There was something which we did on a program last year that's discussed in this old book. It was table tilting, where tables were made to wobble and move about the stage. I thought it would be interesting to take this one step far, further. This is not spiritism that you're about to see, but I think it's going to be something you're going to long remember if ever you saw the program dealing with table tilting itself. Now, itself. Now, Bill, I'm going to ask you to take charge of the book, if you will. We have two lovely people up here from the audience. What's your name, ma'am? Maureen. Maureen, and we have never met before. No. And what is your name? Gail. Are you married? Yes, I am. Are you married? Yes. Obviously, my sensitivity is batting just a little bit zero, but I have taste, I think, in, in people. The table that we're going to use is a fair size one. In fact, if both you girls will grab it, I think you'll feel it, find it fairly heavy. Grab it along the side. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Not dead weight, but it's fairly heavy. Now, we're going to have to make a chain. So would you put your hand on mine, please? Just place your hand on mine about like that, and not hard. I just touch my fingers about in that way. You place your hand over, touching the fingers to the table. I don't want you to press on the table. Now, place your left hand, uh, your right hand, I should say, here, and I will do the same thing. I will place don't, just your fingertips, yeah. just the fingers, and don't press. Every finger must touch, and to make a chain, I will touch them like that. Now, place your left hand, move a little bit, your left hand, if you will, in front of our hands on the table. You'll have to come around. And now place your right hand on top. T just not on top of hers, but on the table, touching one of her fingers or more. Keep that chain. Now, ladies, no matter what happens, stay with the table, but don't press down. Now, my fingers, if you'll note in my right hand, my fingers aren't even touching right now, but I'll touch them every once in a while. My left hand, just slightly. I want you people, however, to to make sure you're in contact with my hands on the table or your other hands. Bill, would you read from the beginning of a chapter on table tilting, where it was not accepted as spiritism, but as a strange phenomenon? Start reading out loud, Bill. Probably no phenomena are more intimately connected in the, the public mind with the spiritistic Concentrating movement on the than those of table turning and table lifting. The reason for this is not, I think, hard to find. There can be no doubt that a large part of the phenomena, at least, are genuine, however we may choose to interpret them. I mean by this, that the table does, in very many cases, actually rise from off the floor. And whether the ultimate explanation be fraud, unconscious muscular action, electricity, spirits, or whatnot, a large share of the public's attention is inevitably bound to be directed toward phenomena that do actually occur, since the vast bulk of these table-turning experiments have been Stay conducted in private home circles where fraud was practically excluded to all appearances. You're not doing this deliberately, are you? No. My fingers are hardly... T Listen, it's not... I want you to think of it becoming lighter, but no matter what happens, do not break your chain. If you have to walk with the table, stay with it. Think of it becoming lighter, not just moving. Don't hardly touch it, but stay with it. Becoming lighter. I want you to think of it becoming lighter. My fingers are not hardly touching, but you, you keep your fingers to it. Becoming lighter. Lighter. Stay with it. Stay with it. 
Stay with it. Keep your head. Don't press. Don't press. Lift your head up. Stay with it. Watch the step, but don't break your chain. Don't break the chain. Stay with it. Stay with it. If, that, if it moves up, stay with it. Don't push down. Leave your hands higher. You're pushing down. Stay with it, if you will. Stay with it. Watch it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Don't break the chain. Stay with it, if you will. Stay. Keep your hands together. Stay. Whatever you do. It's going up higher. Stay. Higher. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay. As it rests, don't press. As it rests, stay with it. Stay with it. Now I ask the lady on my right just to move her right hand away. Her right, just her right hand. Take your right hand. Now take your left hand. As I take my hand away. Now take your left hand away. Take your hand away. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that wild? No wiring. You can examine it. No hooks of any kind. And literally, it did rise. It raised. As a matter of fact... Ladies and gentlemen, if you're curious, for many years over the turn of the century, people asked tables questions and tables reacted. They got answers by the amount of raps. They believed that they were spirits. I think it was something else. But from the concept of talking to a table which bounced or moved or sometimes rose, we have a common term in our culture today of table talk, which is a part of everyday life. Thank you again and be the good Lord willing. I'll see you next week. Bye. Everybody.